Hi, I'm Mike, and today we're going to be installing some modern river rock type tile over some old ceramic tile, but I've got a few repairs to make first. So this is an old shower. You can see the shower pan has a small hairline crack in it, and it's got an old beat up uh, uh, gold colored drain. So I'm going to put some silicone in the crack, and then I'm going to cover the ceramic tile with a bonding agent and I'm going to replace the drain frame and the, and the drain cover with a uh, brushed nickel to match the uh, shower valve. All right, first thing I'm going to do is cover up the holes on this. I'm not going to remove this strainer just yet because I want to try to hit the frame out first. I'm just going to cover this up a little so that uh, any debris doesn't go down the, the hole. All right. Try to chop this up just a little bit, get it started. And I don't really care about damaging under here too much. I'm gonna, when I put the new tile down, the mortar's gonna cover it up anyway. I don't wanna damage the surrounding tiles too much, however. It's coming. So yeah, you can see you just add mortar under that and it sticks down. Okay, now just to vacuum everything up and get it clean. Okay, I got everything vacuumed up. Now I'm going to uh, put some silicone in this small crack here, and it does not have to be pretty because I've got a, a bonding primer that's going to go over it anyway. So I'm just going to fill this. Doesn't matter what color, it's getting covered up. And then I'll smush this in with my finger, and we'll move on. Again, does not have to be pretty. Of course, I don't want big globs of it on there either. So I'm just gonna flatten this out. And when I put the bonding primer on it a little bit later, you shouldn't even see it. The whole idea is just to get it flat enough where it's not going to stand out. Okay, we'll call that good. Okay, I'm going to be using this uh, Mape Eco Prim Grip. It is a bonding uh, primer, and I'm just going to roll it on the bottom of this shower. It says it takes 15 to 60 minutes before you can actually uh, apply the mortar. And this thing here costs about 40 bucks for this small container, which is enough to do any shower or bathtub. All right, next step is to uh, apply the bonding primer and then we can mortar. So this stuff goes on with a 3 8 inch roller and you just want to get it fairly consistent. You can actually pour it right on top of the, the pan here, like I'm using a tray. I've also got a cheap little brush to get into the corners. Remember, I'm going to keep the walls as is and I'm just adding the pebble stuff on the floor. And I'm going to dump some on here just to speed things up a little bit and get a little more of this primer on there. That's more like it. Again, this is a 3 8 inch roller. And I'm going to need to move the K 
camera to get the rest of it. And I'm also gonna get my little chip brush and get into the corners and along the edges. And I also wanna get it into here too. Okay, so here's what it looks like after the primer bonding agent has been applied. We're gonna let that dry and then we can start to uh, uh, add mortar and install the tiles. This is what I'll be using to raise up the drain. It's called an extendo drain. You can get them at a local retailer or online and it will raise the drain up by a quarter of an inch. And if you need to raise it up by more than that, you can buy two kits. Okay, so I've been playing with the layout here and the height of the drain, and I think I've got it right. This kit comes with a series of O-rings and a cover, and I want that to be about a sixteenth of an inch lower than my, my tiles, and I think I've got it. And so, I'll show you how this goes together. I've got the crown and the strainer on the top, and this, uh, this riser piece is the last to go before the strainer and then a series of O-rings. And it comes, the kit comes with three of them, and you use however many you need to get the right height. I'm going to use all three, and that should be about perfect for me. So I'm gonna put it together, and I'll be right back. I'm laying out the tile, and you can see that my issue here is gonna be around the perimeter. So, you know, generally there's two, two ways to go here. You can either put the floor down first, and then the walls on top, or the walls first and then the floor, and that's probably just up to installer's uh, personal favorite. But uh, with me, I'm just doing the floor, so I have to do the pan only. And so I'm gonna be doing some nibbling uh, on some extra tiles that I bought. I'm not gonna cut these tiles flat, that's gonna look stupid. Instead, I bought extra tiles, and I'm just gonna pull off little pieces and fill them in as I go there. So here's an example of how I'm gonna fit these in here. You can see that this tile is too big to fit perfectly. And I want this side to be perfect because it goes nicely with this side. So I'm simply gonna take a utility blade and cut through the netting along here somewhere close and fit it in. And then once I start to mortar everything in, I'll fit in smaller pieces. Okay, so I am in the last steps of laying this out. Um, I've just been taking a uh, straight edge utility knife and just cutting out uh, sections of these sheets to fit. So that's not bad. However, this one is too thick. So I think I have to cut out one, two, and three. And hopefully this is gonna fit without slicing my finger off. And you can see I've got a nice little collection of spare stones sitting around. So that when I come in to fill in all these other little gaps, I've got a nice selection. Okay, so we are, we're getting close. Let's get rid of that. And this will go somewhere else. Plenty of places for it. So I'm almost done dry fitting everything, and you can see that it's like a, a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle, which I hate thousand piece jigsaw puzzles, but if you like to put a puzzle together, then this is definitely the project for you. You can see all my little pieces I'm playing with, just fitting them into areas that make it look random. And so uh, once I'm happy with this, then I'll mix up some mortar and get ready to stick them in. All right, we got mortar mixed up. I'm going to start to actually lay this stuff down. Now you could you could uh, spread the spread the entire shower. But I've got the camera in here, so I'm going to do a section at a time. High spot. 
All right, I'm gonna get a first couple of pieces down here and then I'll have to move the camera around. Now this stuff will move around nicely so long as you keep the, the work time open. and level and I'm going to wipe it down set it in and I've got a couple Okay, I need to move the camera so I can get the, the next row in. This was a tough piece because I nibbled out an area for the drain and it should come together pretty nicely. Once I get everything set up, then I'll put this drain, I'll uh, mortar that into that spot. It should be good. So as you can see with this, most of the time was putting together all the little pieces around the perimeter and in the spots and I thought it needed a little more help. Just It's still nice and wet. It's easy to move stuff around if you need to. Again, this helps to get those little pebbles, the loose ones, the same height with everything else. And I cut a big supply of those small ones just in case my timer is running short and I could uh, just pick and choose what I wanted. These are slivers off of whole sheets that match nicely to the cut of these other ones.
It's nice while it's still smooth to be able to move it around because they don't always fit exactly like when you when I had them laid out, just dry fitting everything. All right, I'm gonna spend a little time cleaning up the walls and then fitting some more of these little, these bunch of little pieces here in the spots I think might need a little extra help. Okay, last thing to do here is to install this frame around the drain there. And so you can see underneath it, there's a little indentation here that will accept some mortar. Some people use grout. I'm gonna just use mortar. Okay, we're gonna clean this up a little bit. Make sure I didn't get too much mortar everywhere. You can just make sure that the mortar didn't get all over everything and is down low enough so that when I grout this all in tomorrow that um, we're going to see the grout and not the mortar. Here is the floor all, all mortared in. I'm going to let this uh, dry overnight and I'll come back in and grout it tomorrow. Uh, basically I've just been cleaning this area up, cleaning up the walls, mortar and stuff I've spilled because I'm a pig and uh, tomorrow should be a finished shower floor. I'm using this 511 sealer. You can use this as a sealer for stone and whatnot, but I'm gonna use it as a grout release, which is another use for this stuff. This stuff is pretty easy to use. You can roll it on, brush it on, or just use a white rag and wipe it on. You wanna get the surface damp, but not get the grout joints all excessively wet. Then you leave it on for a couple of minutes and then you wipe off any excess. This will make grouting a lot easier and you could do this when the, before the sheets are installed. However, since I had a bunch of small little sliver pieces to do, I didn't want to come back and try to find which ones those were. So. I figured I'd just do it now. You can see when these get uh, damp, the color really comes out on the stones. One thing I recommend doing is getting a roll of painter's tape or some type of strong tape and paint and taping along the base of the wall. I just set it down flat on the surface, whether it's ceramic tile or this pebble stuff and, and lay it flat so that you create a nice line. So when the, when the grout is drying, not completely dry, but when it's still crumbly, you can pull off of it. You can pull off this tape and it'll make a perfect line along the wall and you don't, you don't have a lot of cleanup to do. Just saves a lot of time and it looks really, really clean. Of course, getting in the corners is no fun. But because you're leaving the tape on the floor, it kind of creates a line by itself. Just keep it taut. Pull it out a little bit. Roll it back and it makes its own perfect line when you're done. Okay, so I'm done taping. As you can see, it goes all around the perimeter of the pan. The uh, tape uh, ends are right here and they match up perfectly just because I laid the tape roll on its side and it tells me exactly what height to put it at. But uh, if you don't do this, it's not the end of the world. You're just going to have more cleanup. I hate cleanup and so by doing this, I don't have to pick grout out of the corners. Okay, with grout, the general rule is to use the least amount necessary because anything extra, you're going to get to clean up. 
I mash it into the corners. Make sure to get at least the uh, height of the tape. Get into all the grooves. time on this depending on how you mixed it temperature all that good stuff I'm just trying to not miss any of the voids Okay, that's what it looks like freshly grouted. I'm gonna wait a couple of minutes and I'll start cleaning it. You can see along the tape, it's starting to dry. The thin little wispies there are starting to dry up, so we're getting close. So this is the point where you can really start cleaning this stuff up here. This is just a damp, uh, damp sponge. I've wrung out really well. And I wanna go around the perimeter here. And I've got actually two buckets of water because this stuff is just, it will just pollute everything. So, wring out the sponge a lot, change the water a lot, and it'll start coming alive. Generally, you want to do a diagonal sweep on tiles, but these are oddly shaped. And uh, so there really isn't a diagonal on it. I just don't want to dig too deeply, but I do want to dig my finger into the corners here, try to get those. Okay, time for the finishing touches. I'm going to pull the tape now, and it should be uh, nice and straight, except sometimes the corners don't come out perfectly, but you can dress that up with a sponge. Um, and it should come a little crumbly. You can see it's stuck to the bottom of the tape there. That is perfect because as you know, I hate cleaning, and if it's stuck to the tape, I don't have to clean it up. And I'm just pulling it level with the floor, exactly like I put it in. And here it comes, I can see the corner has an abundance of grout in there. So let's see if the tape holds, and it does. So look how nice that corner looks. I don't have to dress that up at all. And the rest of this is coming out just as nicely. And by the way, I use one continuous piece of tape, so I don't have any seams where there might be a height difference. Okay, here's the edges. Using the old blue tape trick, you can see I need to clean up a little bit of it. By the way, that stuff on the wall is not from me, that's from the previous thing. Anyway, it came out pretty nice. I need to remove the tape off of the drain and uh, uh, take care of the crown there. But other than that, it came out really easy with minimal cleanup. You can see the little crumblies here as I pulled the tape, like right there. Uh, that's dry, I can just pick that up and there's some in that corner there too. But for the most part, it's a very small cleanup job. One thing I am going to need to clean up is this drain because I've got a lot of tape on it and uh, as I pull it, I'm going to need to uh, make it pretty again. Up here, I can fill that in. Well, here is the finished product. I uh, buffed out the drain a little bit, filled in the ring, and uh, in a little bit, I'm going to take a white cloth and just uh, buff the haze that may form on top of these things, but I did I did put a grout release on them So I may not need to do that, but I'm gonna call this a wrap came out really nice and wasn't that difficult
I hope that video helped you out. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. And I've got a lot of videos on my channel that'll help you out, so give it a look. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and we will see you next time.